You're listening to the Hope Company Podcast. Our mission is that you're refreshed, restored, and released. Check back each week for new messages, and we hope that you are encouraged by the Word today. Of course, last week we started a two-part, we call it a mini-series called Under Construction. Under Construction, right? Last week I said, excuse my mess. I'm a work in progress, amen? Can anybody identify with that, right? Yeah. Again, while like everybody's making New Year's resolutions and all that, and so I'm trying to get better, and I'm going to look better, I'm going to feel better, my money's going to be better, right? I'm just up here like, excuse my mess. <laughs> I'm a work in progress, amen, right? Uh, uh, because, again, truth be told, if we examine ourselves, right, our lives are a beautiful, productive mess, Amen. All right? But can I just tell you this, that we cannot use this as an excuse to do nothing. Right? It says I'm going to work in progress, right? Meaning that I'm, I'm moving towards something. Amen? All right? So I want to take you real quick to uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2. And I ask you if you would stand for the reading of God's word. We just do it out of reverence and respect. I'm going to read one scripture for you, but we're going to touch on some more. It says, therefore, everybody say therefore. Old rule of thumb says, if you see therefore in the Bible, you need to see, go back and look what it's there for. Come on, somebody, right? All right. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out, everybody say work out. Your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do work for his good pleasure. I'd like to use for a subject today, salvation requires a sledgehammer. Come on, y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. God, thank you so much for your word. Speak to us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen, 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 amen. Look at the person beside you and tell them, work it out. Uh, Find the other person on the other side. Tell them, work it out. All right, all right. Hey, real quick, guys, let me tell y'all something. When I was in college, one summer, right? I said, I'm going to get a job. I need a job. I need to make some money. So I went through this temp agency, right? And, and the temp agency, they said, well, you know, we, we got a job for you. You know, we need, to meet, we need you to meet us at, at, at such and such place, right? And, and you need to pack you a lunch. Now, let me ever tell you guys for warning. Uh, if you're looking for a job and they, they tell you to pack your lunch, you about to do some work, y'all. All right? All right? I'm just telling you, all right? They tell you pack your lunch, all right? And, and so um, I'm in Blacksburg is where we were. And so we drive, you know, 30, uh, 45 minutes away. We get to this place, and um, I recognize the place because I've been there before. Uh, and some of you may have been here before. It's called the Cascades, all right? And, and you have to hike up. You know, I don't know, I guess a mile or so, you know, to hike up, and then you see this beautiful waterfall. But guess what? I wasn't there to see the beautiful waterfall. <laughs> we got out of the truck and grabbed the lunch, and we're walking up, we're walking up, and we're like, what in the world are we doing? Where are we going? All right? And, and we get up there, and, and we're on the side. Where are we? Click around. Y'all stay with me. I got a pointer right here. Uh, we're on the side of this hill. Right? Okay? And they hand me a sledgehammer. And they's like, like we, we, we're about to begin work on this platform or this overlook. Right? See, I didn't know that that's what it looked like because I'll tell y'all a rest story in a minute. And so they hand me a sledgehammer and they're like, we need you to break rocks. I'm like, me? <laughs> now, mind you, uh, you know, I did housework and a little yard work, but huh? nothing, nothing of, of, of this measure before, right? Okay. So they had, and so all day long, I'm breaking rocks, right? 
and looking at my watch. <laughs> Come on, all right? I'm breaking rocks, all right? And looking at my watch. It's lunchtime, all right? And I think, oh, man, I get a little break, right? Hands all dirty and look, come on, right? And I'm like, I'm going to wash my hands. It's like, you don't, you just eat your sandwich. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Mind you, I hadn't done any labor like that before in my life, right? So all day long, I'm working it out, right? Sledgehammer. End of the day, get in the truck, go home, dirty, filthy. I sit on the couch, and that's when something deep in my spirit spoke to me. I got a revelation, I believe, from the Lord. Two things, two things the Lord gave me. Number one, that construction would not be my career path. <laughs> Lord help. God bless anybody who does construction. All right, I'll do that, number one. And then number two is, is this, that this bridge was going to be built or this platform was going to be built, but some things had to be worked out. Come on, right? Some things had to be worked out. Some, some, some rocks had to, had to be broken, right? And some things had, had to be moved out of the way, right? And it's the same thing in our spiritual life, right? Now, understand this. Let me help you guys real quick. You guys need to know this, that there's a difference between work for and work out. You cannot work for your salvation. No, we talked about that last week right? Salvation, is, it's a free gift of grace, right? It's given to us by God, by his death on the cross, by sending his son to die on the cross, right? It is a free gift, so you cannot work for it, but it says you need to work out. Everybody say work out. Yeah. Work out. He says uh, you need to put forth effort. Oh, come on, somebody, right? See, see, this is what happens sometimes. We get saved, and then we stop putting forth effort. Y'all got mighty quiet on me, right? We get saved, and we stop working. Come on, right? Right? Now, you cannot, listen, clear. You cannot work for your salvation. It's free gift. But as Scripture says, you got to work out. You got to put forth some effort. There are some things that we need to do on our end. Amen? God saves us, but then in order to grow, huh, it takes some work. I just can't. And watch all the work be done. Come on, somebody. Right? It says this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, Paul again writing to the Philippians. He's like, look, I love y'all, right? He says, as you have always obeyed. Look, you've always obeyed me. You, you've been listening to me, right? And you've obeyed the word of the Lord. So now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. Let me stop right there. He's like, not only like when I'm there, but when I'm not there. Right? Let me ask you, right? because sometimes, you know, we give the appearance to be working on things when we're in the presence of others. But when we're away from others, what are we doing? He says this, work out. Everybody say work out. Your own salvation with fear and trembling. Look, there, it takes some work. There's some things. Come on. You got to take the sledgehammer, right? There's some things. I don't know about me, right? There's some things that I got to work out in my life. Come on, right? Huh? Through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that lives in me, there's some things, right? <laughs> you got to work out. Then it says work out your own. Everybody say your own. I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to step down. I'm going to sit down, huh? Because y'all know what we do sometimes? Huh? We're so focused on everybody else. Huh? We focus on everybody else and what somebody else is doing instead of looking at ourselves. Huh? Come on. Sometimes we get so focused on somebody else's life. You know, you know what the Scripture uh, talks about? Sometimes we can notice the speck in somebody else's eye instead of the log in our own. Right? We're worried about somebody, what somebody else is doing. Lord, did you see such and such? Hmm? Oh, oh, my goodness. Right? Huh? Yeah, that church talk. Y'all with me, huh? Yeah. Huh? Look at her over here with her hands up. 
Oh. Huh? But the scripture says we ought to work out our own, right? Instead of focusing on somebody else, right? work out our own salvation. Look, put forth the effort so we can be more and more like Jesus. See, the goal is to be more and more like Jesus, right? Now, we will never be perfect, right? He's the only perfect one, right? But through the presence and the power of the Spirit, if we make a commitment to live by the Spirit, we can be more and more like Him. It says, work it out, right? Work it out. Oh, man, I moved back. Okay. It says, work out your own salvation with reverence and respect, with fear and trembling. Can I just say that sometimes we give more honor uh, to things of the world than we do right, to the things of God and to salvation, right? Huh? With fear and with trembling. Man, this, this thing is serious. We're talking about eternity. Listen to me. We are talking about eternity where you will spend forever. That's how important it is. Sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we're so, we're so earthly minded that we forget we're talking about eternity. He says, I work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, right? Both to will and to work for his, his good pleasure, right? Uh, as I read that, that just that, that tells me, right, if I'm seeking God, God, God has given me his spirit, right? And if I'm seeking the spirit, if I'm seeking God, right, God will just increase this hunger and this desire in me to work and to get better and to improve myself and to, and to move forward, right, and, and to be all that he would have me to be. Amen. It is God who works in you both to will and to work for his Good pleasure. Now watch this. I think Paul gives us three things. I think he gives us three things as we go on through the scriptures of, of how we can work out our salvation. Y'all ready for him? Are y'all ready for him? Okay, here, here's number one. Watch your mouth. Huh? Look at the person beside and say, watch your mouth. Huh? Huh? See, watch that. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. See, people can see us physically, but the thing that will betray us is our mouth, right? Huh? See, for, for many of us, like, uh, we got to ask God to, to work this out, right? The, 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 my, my speech and the, and the things that I say. Come on, right? Uh, let, me, let me take you guys to when um, um, Peter was standing by the fire after Jesus was arrested. Um, they came to him. They was like, you were with him, right? And he's like, oh, I went with him. Like, you were with him. Oh, I went with him. And they said, one of the guys said, you were with him. Your speech betrays you. Huh? I believe not only does you mean like, like your accent, but, but the way you talk. Huh? By the way you talk, I know you've been with Jesus. See, people ought to be able to tell that we have been with Jesus by the way we talk. Amen? Come on, right? Can I be honest before you guys? Can I tell you I believe the first thing that the Lord did for me was he healed my filthy mouth. Oh, come on, your pastor being real with you. Huh? They're like, ooh, pastor used to cuss? Yep. And don't try me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> watch your mouth. Everybody say, watch your mouth. He says, do all things. Everybody say, all things without grumbling or disputing. Ooh. No, Paul. Why you hit me so hard right here, Paul? He says, do all things. Y'all know what all things means? Without what? Grumbling or, and disputing. Huh? King James said, murmuring or complaining, right? See, this is what happens. When, when we complain, we say, God, what you've done for me is not good enough. Huh? When we complain, we speak a curse over the blessing that God is trying to give us. Huh? Somebody for you right now, it's too hot in here. Huh? It's too cold in here. Huh? And, and we come here complaining, don't we, right? We're complaining. You're like, that's not a complaint. Yes, it is. I had to park way down the road. <laughs> Do all things, right? 
Because see, watch, watch what he says. That you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a cricket and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Right? Our speech will betray us, right? We, we, our speech or, or our speech will confirm us, right? And so we have to be careful of, of what we're saying because we're living in a crooked, a crooked right, and twisted generation, right? And they're looking at us, amen? They're looking at us, and, and the only way they're going to see Jesus is to hear what we say, see or hear Jesus, is to look at us and see and hear what we're saying, In the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. See, we ought to shine as lights in the world, amen? Right? He says we, we ought to be that city that sets on a hill that cannot be hid. And one of the ways we can do that, right, is by watching our mouth, amen? Ask God to work on my mouth, huh? Salvation takes a sledgehammer. Come on, right? God, work on my mouth. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, somebody, you might need to come to the altar right now. God, work on my mouth. Huh? Because you can look a certain way, but the way you speak. Huh? Paul even says, let your words be full of grace and seasoned with salt. Number two, cling to the word. Everybody say cling to the word. <laughs> cling to the word. Now, if I'm going to work out, right, if I'm going to put forth effort, this is probably the greatest thing I can do is cling to the word. <sighs> this word is life. Huh? It, it, it said it is sharper than two, and any two-edged sword, right? It pierces, it divides, it's a living word. This word meets us right where we are, right? And, 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 and I'm telling you, if, if I'm going to work out myself, if I'm going to grow in Christ, if I'm going to move toward being all that God has to be, guess what I need to do? I need to cling to this word. I need to know what's in this word. I have to read this word, study this word, hold on to this word, right? When people try to give me suggestions, I'm like, is it in the word, right? When people try to tell me what to do, I mean, is it in the word, right? I, I, look, I have to cling to this word with everything that's within me. It's the word. Heaven and earth will pass away. The word will stand forever. Let me encourage you as you start off the year, get in the word. Uh, eat some word every day. Whether it's a verse, whether it's a chapter, whether it's a whole book, eat the word. Cling to the word. Paul says this, I want you guys hold fast to the word of life. Hold fast. Like, like cling to it. Like, like man, oh, this word is so important. Huh? I'm not, I'm not going to trust in anything else. Right? This word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. Right? This word gives me life and gives me life eternal. Hold fast to the word of life. Look, we're living in a day of time where people will tell you this is old. Why? It don't mean a whole lot that men wrote this thing. Right? And we believe that men wrote this thing, but men who were inspired uh, by the Holy Spirit, inspired by God uh, to write this thing. Right? Amen? They didn't write it on their own. They couldn't have written it on their own, right? They can't write it on their own because the words that they wrote in it and the prophecies given it, you just can't come up with that on your own. I don't care who you are. Huh? Man, this word, man, if this, then we're of all men most miserable, Paul says, right? Huh? If we don't believe this, we have nothing, Right? People will give you their suggestions and they'll tell you, look, there's something else and, and look to that. Look, it is about the Word of God and it will always be about the Word of God. Look, here at this church, we're going to preach the Word of God. We're going to stand on the Word of God. If we don't do anything else, we're going to cling to the Word of God. Huh? Commit. I'm telling you, God, I'm going to preach what's in this Word and sometimes y'all going to get mad. Amen? 
Huh? Because the word cuts like that. You're like, ooh. Huh? But come on back the next Sunday. <laughs> It'll heal you too. Amen. Hold fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain. I said, look, man, I gave you this word. He's like, man, so he says, so that in the day of Christ, when Christ comes, he said, I may be proud that I, that, that man, that you guys, y'all, y'all like, y'all, you held fast to the word. He said, that's what I love. That's what I want. Listen, and, and, and that's my desire for me, but, but for each one of you individually, like that in the day of Christ, when Christ comes, right, that he will find you individually, this church collectively, clinging to the word of God. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Cling to the word, right? If you need to work out your salvation, all right? Cling to the word, right? Huh? Right? Because y'all know what the word will do. The word will work some things out in my life. Amen? Huh? The word will work that anger out of my life. The word will work that jealousy out of my life. Right? The word will work that frustration. Right? The word will work that habit out of my life. Right? <laughs> Cling to the word. Last thing. Number three. Be ready to rejoice. Huh? Now watch this. Watch this. Be ready to rejoice. Watch what Paul says here. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and I what? Rejoice with you all. He says, likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice in me. What Paul is saying here, Paul's like, even though, Paul's, Paul knew he was about to die, right? He said, but even though if I be poured out like a drink offering, right? If, 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 even if death is facing me, guess what? I'm going to rejoice. He said, and what I want you guys to do too is to rejoice, right? See, understand this. When we're able to rejoice when things aren't going away, right, it's evidence that God Huh? has been working on me, right? And I've been working out some things, right, in my own salvation, right? Huh? When I can rejoice, when the boss calls me in the office and tells me my job is no more, huh? Huh? God is working out uh, some things in me, right? When my kids have cut up and act a fool and I can still rejoice in God, huh? Huh? it shows that God is working out some things in me, right? Huh? When my money is low, I got $1.83 in the bank and I can still rejoice, That means God is working out something in me, right? Because truth be told, I can remember a time when those things would upset me, when those things will send me off the deep end, huh? and the deep end won't pretty. Amen? So I'm going to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith. I am glad and I rejoice with you all. Likewise, come on worship team. You also should be glad and rejoice with me. Huh? You have to be able to rejoice even in the tough times. James said like this, he says, count it all joy. Right? Be able to rejoice when, when trials and temptations come your way. Right? Like, like count it all joy. It's, it's, it's good. Huh? Be able to rejoice. Why? Because God is still in control. Because God is working something out. Right? So as I close out, I want to remind you. Right? That salvation requires a sledgehammer. Meaning that there's going to be some things. You have to work out. You can't be, oh, I'm saved, I'm good. Right? I mean, yeah, you're good, right? But, but if I want to be more and more like Christ, guess what? I have to work. I have to, I 
have to read. I have to pray. I have to be able to, to rejoice. I have to be able to watch my mouth, right? Ask God to grow me, to work those things out in me. See, and, and you guys may have heard me say this before, you know, because I, I, I believe this with all my heart that there, there are some things God take from you instantly. Then I believe there's things that have to be worked out in you. Huh? Like, like, like for me, I believe that God knew, I ain't going to say I believe, I know that God knew I would be doing this one day. So when he saved me, he touched my mouth like, you can't be cussing. But that selfishness and that anger issue, <laughs> you gonna work that, I'm going to work that out. It's going to take some, some prodding, right? It's going to take some molding. It's, it's, it's going to take some shaping, right? Huh? Because you've been doing that for a long time. Oh, come on, somebody, right? Huh? And, and some of you are in a similar situation. And you're like, I got this anger problem. I can't understand why I keep getting angry all the time, right? Are you doing anything to work on that anger problem? Yelling and slamming doors is not working on it. <laughs> I got this selfishness issue and I'm selfish, right? But, 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 but are you doing things to work it out? Are you intentionally like, like going to serve others? Right? Are you intentionally doing things, right? To, to, so you, aren't, you won't focus on you, but put the focus on somebody else? checking out the Hope Company podcast. If you were encouraged by the message today, we would love to hear from you. To connect with us online, visit us at hopeco.org. We hope that you have been refreshed, restored, and released.